for the most part, the supply chains that we that we live with are, I would say, rather intransparent. We don't know necessarily what we eat, where it comes from, who has produced it, uh, how old it is. Uh, so there is um, a level of um, of uh, alienation when it comes to our relationship to food. Everything I've tried to install in in Denmark has been more or less the opposite, namely closeness. Um, I believe that uh, once you know who has produced your food, once you cook something that uh, that is uh, the fruit of another person's labor, uh, then everything starts making sense and, and, uh, and everything starts having a purpose, some, a sense of meaning. So beyond the pure flavor aspect, uh, I think there is also this uh, spirituality related to uh, the food that we cook and, and, and the food that we eat. And uh, I think this is um, overlooked in, in modern society. When I was a child in Denmark, uh, the, the meal was pretty short. Uh, and uh, we, it felt as if we just sat down together to, to eat our fill, to um, take in the calories so that we could, uh, you know, Go, move on with our lives in the evening, each of us, and uh, without having to eat until the next morning. It was pretty short meals, maybe five, maximum ten minutes, and nobody spoke a lot. It was a shock or a revelation when I went to France. When I went to France to uh, work as uh, au pair in Paris and later on in Agen, where I suddenly. Uh, found myself participating in meals that would endure two to three hours and people would be raving about uh, sudden flavors and uh, planning the next meal. And the, the, the funny thing is that this is something that without knowing about it, I had been somehow longing for. So when I came back to Denmark, I did everything I could to install these uh, values and, and, and this kind of rhythm of the meal. That, that obviously is much related to how you cook the meal because who want to spend uh, uh, three hours on eating something shitty uh, that, you, that is not worth uh, contemplating around. In my own family, I mean, we, we, live, we live a wonderful life uh, when we are alone and, and when we are together. But, uh, but truly speaking, uh, particularly the evening meal, is for us a moment also to to, rec to reconnect in the family. I mean, to find out what what the children and, and what uh, me and my wife have been doing for the last 24 hours, what we are preoccupied with, uh, what we are worrying about, or what we are uh, truly looking forward to. So a truly a moment to, to sit together without the mobile phones, well, for the most part without the mobile phones, uh, and and uh, gathering, and and um, reconvene, and uh, and feel that everyone is okay, and and participate in in whatever bothers one or the other family member. For most of my adult life, I had been trying to find uh, ways uh, to impact uh, the food culture of my country because I felt that. Um, in spite of the many positive aspects of living in Denmark, I was missing uh, the values uh, from French food culture and French gastronomy. I was missing uh, having thousands of uh, wine producers and farmers and cheese makers, uh, vegetable growers, uh, charcuterie people that uh, wake up every morning and that are proud about their products and and uh, and once you go to the market it's uh, it's a feast i was missing all of that in denmark because we were suffering from from a lot of uh, food categories dominated by a narrow amount of uh, monopolistic uh, uh, companies 
if our food culture truly should be counted amongst one of the greatest in the world, what beyond the aspect of deliciousness should characterize this food culture? What should be its contribution to the, to the global conversation about food? My personal contribution to the, to the picture and the evolution was to, uh, or let's say it was a pledge or a commitment, was to start a restaurant, uh, the restaurant called Noma, that, uh, that would dedicate itself to working only with, uh, with local produce, with local Danish and uh, Nordic uh, ingredients, and see how far we could go with that. After 20 years of, of uh, pretty hard work, so many restaurants uh, are mentioning in their menus that uh, the leeks come from there, the chicken from this place, and uh, the cheese from this cheesemaker. That makes me happy because I, I can see that uh, people are, are, are reconnecting and, uh, and things are getting a sense of meaning. And all of this has have, have happened in, in the span of uh, 20 years, which I think is, is pretty amazing. Activism is something very personal. Uh, it means that, um, that you as an individual citizen, that you stand up um, against uh, stupidities, unfairness, uh, things that are unjust and, and, and without meaning, that, that are absurd. And there are so many absurdities related to our food systems. And once you as an individual with friends uh, start uh, protesting against that, because you have realized that uh, eating is an agricultural act, then that is activism. When you as an individual person uh, take upon you uh, uh, responsibility for changing things that uh, are not as they should be, uh, when you fight to improve things for the better, that, that is food activism. Some people probably would call it elitist that, uh, that you source your, your, your produce from very distinct uh, local uh, supply chains because the truth is that at the same time 80% of the population are getting most of their foodstuff from uh, countries that, uh, which names they're not even able to pronounce. Um, and, um, but I think there is a necessity these days, I mean, not necessarily just with COVID, but also with the whole aspect of uh, carbon emissions um, and the overconsumption of meat, there is a, I think there is a big need for countries and uh, cities um, or regions to organize uh, food production and food supply according to the old uh, French model.